ओम सदाशिव सारंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओं सहनाव सह नौ भुनक् सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु मिदिषा वह ओं शाति 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 okay so last time we saw that one is higher than the other all that we saw okay any questions clarifications or it's all clear clear okay so then let's go ahead okay भूतेषु गूढ़ात्मा प्रकाशते दृश्यते अग्रया बुद्ध्या सूक्ष्म सूक्ष्मदर्शि सेषूतेषु गूढ़ात्मा एष आत्मा सर्वेशु भूतेषु गूढ़ दिस आत्मा दिस आई is hidden in everyone he says why hidden out of ignorance really speaking it is not hidden it is the most evident thing i know i am there is no way anybody does not recognize myself as i am but with respect to what i am a huge ignorance about it therefore gudaha one is simple ignorance the other is mistaken notions identification with what you are associated with and making a self judgment with respect to that on the basis of my body mind etc nobody takes them just as instruments unless you know the truth since i don't know myself i will automatically identify with what i am associated with it is natural remember the role story of sharukh khan role on the stage there is no way he will say he is not a beggar because he finds himself dressed as a beggar amnesia he is bound to judge himself like that he is bound to judge himself like that because He is bound to judge himself like that because he is associated with that, and he has forgotten who he is. So it is natural. Therefore, Guda, Atma, Guda, what you are remains hidden. Na prakashate is not evident for everyone. Even though I am is evident, what I am is not evident. Na prakashate. दृश्यते तो अग्रया बुद्ध्य दें दृश्यते बट यू कैन नो सी दृश्यते सी इन द सेंस ऑफ नोइंग डायरेक्ट नॉलेज हाउ सूक्ष्म बुद्ध्या ओके अग्रया बुद्ध्या सूक्ष्म सूक्ष्मदर्शि बै अ रिफाइन इंटेलेक्ट बै सटल इंटेलेक्ट people unmute themselves and then create a racket so many years but basic etiquette of <laughs> being online is not recognized till itna gross hai to fir agraya buddhi kidhar se aayega dekhiye unmuted सूक्ष्म बुद्धिया नाउ वेन यू से सटल माइंड एक्सेट्रा रिफाइंड माइंड वॉट इज रिफाइंड माइंड वेन यू से सटल माइंड रिफाइंड माइंड शार्प माइंड नो वेक टर्म्स यू नो वन वे ऑफ लुकिंग एट इट इज 
Can you appreciate the fine things in life? Like? If you have fine taste, you will appreciate fine taste. Yeah, like for example, recognizing the difference between sea green, parrot green, <laughs> woman will get it faster. <laughs> Sea green is, is green is green, na? You tell your painter, I want sea green color. Yes, sir, I'll take it. Like For him, sea green, parrot green, everything. Green is green, right? <laughs> but this is, this is part of your Viveka. The difference between sea green and parrot green is part of Viveka. But then when you have a Viveka, you can get upset very fast. This is not my sea green. <laughs> it is not my vision of sea green. Because sea green also there can be variations. Okay. Then what? Therefore you need Vairagi along with it so that you don't keep getting upset. <laughs> Otherwise you can look at a color in someone else's house and get upset. <laughs> You don't like their color, they like their colors, their house. Uh, I can't stand it. <laughs> Correct? Eh? Don't worry. I have also been to places where I can't stand those colors. <laughs> but they like it, it's their place. Enjoy it. What has the poor color done to you anyway? <laughs> what has the poor color done to you? Yeah. So, That refined intellect requires not only a refined taste but vairagya also. Otherwise, you can get upset at nothing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can get upset at nothing. Some of you, how can you wear that color? That bright orange color is not you. <laughs> Correct? It's not me. That's the only color I got, so I know what. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah, if you can get a better color, great. But now you have it, you're not going to waste resources. So let it use it for some time and then see. <laughs> so, that Sukshmaya Buddha involves all the Adhikaritvam that is mentioned. Viveka, Vairagya, Samadama, very important, mastery of the mind, your emotions, etc. Yeah. My God, I can't stand that sweet, it is too sweet. Huh? Too sweet? It is sweet, what is too sweet? <laughs> How can a sweet be too sweet? It's supposed to be sweet. <laughs> Supposed to be sweet. But are you seeing what I am trying to say? See, you have a refined taste. Okay. That's good. That's sukshma. But if it is not, that sukshmatvam doesn't have vairagi along with it, problems will happen. You will go to someone house, someone's house, PR say they made a lot of jalebis. My God, jalebi is too sweet. Yaar. I can't eat it. Kalo, achha hai. <laughs> the people will get upset. So much you didn't even take one piece of jalebi. <laughs> By the way, I like it, okay? <laughs> My taste in sweets is very rustic. Why? Rishikesh, developed in Rishikesh. What I am trying to say is the fineness of your thinking and feeling, being able to appreciate the fine differences of things. Viveka, that's all part of Viveka, refinement. Yeah. Yeah. Refinement of taste, refine. The whole thing is connected with your thinking. Basically, it's Viveka, Vairagya, Samadama, etc. Yes. But that becomes like block understanding. You know? 
but this is also part of that uh, refinement okay okay to na prakashe na sukshma sukshma darshibi hi sukshma darshibi hi by those people who can see fine things he says subtle who can understand nuances when you make a statement someone who can understand nuances like you know as supposing there's an issue there can you go to the core issue straight define their core issue what is it otherwise you will find yourself arguing superficial what is the core issue involved important to be able to see that and then what are the nuances involved all these are necessary you know being able to go to the heart of the issue core and understanding the nuances nuances is the spread core is focus if your mind can do that you're fine you will make a good student of vedanta yeah i'm not joking <laughs> this is what it is about look at any international event happening for example israel and hamas and you look at the debate that's happening it's all on the superficials even those who understand the core issue don't want to talk about it avoidance core is usually simple jews have to be eliminated from there <laughs> that is their policy it's simple for hamas may not be for all the palestinians but for hamas it is understand their core issue and then understand nuances of what they are doing on how to counter all that things but you need both another way of putting it to be able to have focus thinking and have lateral thinking at the same way focused and go lateral also both without focus lateral thinking is just beating around the bush only focus you can become blinkers on view focused awareness diffused awareness both are necessary in yoga focused awareness is practiced like tratak etc diffused awareness nobody very few teach in yoga <laughs> to have 360 degree vision like about what's happening around that awareness there are 100 different ways i can put it okay i hope you are getting it are you all getting it or are there doubts on this we push low because this is something that you all have to cultivate i can only talk about it i can only give you tips about how to do it any questions or is it clear okay someone has said getting it someone is nodding all right so i hope you all have got it okay all right fine okay sukshma darshibihi then what with that what am i supposed to do here it is yachhed vang manasi pragnyat yachhek jnanatmani jnanatmi mahati niyachhed tad yachhed shantatmani simple इतने ही बात है होल वेदांत इज समड अप इन दिस वन वर्स क्या करने का है यह छे टेक शिफ्ट योर एंडिंग 
Vang Manasi, from your sense organ level functioning into the mind. The mind, re resolve the mind into your pragna, intellect, etc. Taj Yakched Jnanatmani into the individual self. Jnanatmani Mahati in the Mahat Ahankara, the cosmic mind. Niye Ched Shantatmani, resolve that into the Atma Shantaha that you are. Simple, it's not <laughs> Clear, no? Or not clear? <laughs> See, my identification is what? With my body, senses, etc., isn't it? Because that's what I'm functioning with the maximum time. To shift that identification from there to the mind, because the mind that directs them everything. All right. From there, my reasoning, etc., to the knower that I am. Because I am the knowing, the sentient being, the knowing entity, the awareful being. But that awareful being is part of the Mahatahankara, Ishwara. And Ishwara is what? Nothing but pure consciousness. So that individual and total, he has merged together. Important. Why? Because that consciousness then becomes limitless. Otherwise, people will contemplate and say, I am consciousness. But I am a pocket of consciousness here. I am everything. The basis for everything will not come. So the idea is to shift your focus, <coughs> your identification. See, when you are functioning, you are always functioning with the body and mind. <coughs> that doesn't change. But does the body and mind remain instruments or you are taking yourself as that? That's the only difference. So that's why he's saying shift that focus. Sense organs, body, etc. into the mind, mind into your reasoning ability, into the awareful being. That awareful being is part of the totality and that totality is into the Shantatma, the pure consciousness. That is not disturbed by any thought, any action, nothing. You can do all your thinking and acting. It doesn't affect the eye that I am. That shift. That's all that is there in Vedanta, really speaking, isn't it? So, this verse, in a way, is revealing what you are. In a way, you can use it in contemplation also. Shift my identification of body, mind, etc. into that awareful being, that awareful being part of the totality, and that totality is nothing but pure consciousness. Yeah. That's where the whole thing works. Without knowing, it won't work as contemplation. If you know, it'll work. If you have got insights, it'll work into contemplation. I am seeing some faces clear, some faces in doubt. Those who are in doubt, please ask. What is the doubt? Because unless you ask, I don't know what your doubt is. Or is it clear? It's a process of logical thinking and shifting your identification along with your thinking. Okay. All right. Then you said you have to get insights, etc. Okay. All right. Then there is a famous quote which has been mistranslated all the time. Okay. And the next verse. Uttishta jagrata prapya varani bhodataha Shurasya dhara nishita duratya durgam patas tat kavayo vadanti. The first part they attribute to Swami Vivekananda. Vivekananda was quoting the Upanishad. But translation may have got a bad idea. Uttishta, wake up, get up. Jagrata, wake up. Hey, it should be Jagrata and then wake up. No? <laughs> then get up. And you are walking, talking characters, but you are asleep, he says. 
asleep to the reality. Therefore, jag, uttishta jagrata, get up, wake up, uttishta jagrata. Prapya varan nibodata, varan prapya, it has been, this second line has been translated as stopped, stopped not until the goal is reached. That is not what it, the verse says. Varan prapya, reaching those special people, the teachers of Vedanta. Nibodhata, understand. Nischena bodhata. Very clearly, understand it very, very clearly. Because just shifting identification, etc. is not a mere logical process. It is based on understanding. If you need learning. So, varan prapya nibodhata, understand from that. Then it says, he is striking a note of caution. Kshurasya dhara nishatta duratyaya. Kavayo vadanti kavayaha. Kranti drashti, the wise people. Okay. Talk about it what? Durgam pataha. It's a difficult task, difficult road. Okay. Kshurasya dhara nishita duratyaya. Kshurasya dhara, it's a razor's edge. Duratyaya. Therefore, not very easy to walk. Because it's always a tightrope uh, tight walking. Na? Why is it Kshurasya dhara? Because you need, the one sadhana that you need in life is to be alert and deliberate. An alert mind. And that is one thing we all lack. We have become mechanical in our thinking, in our feeling, in our this thing. There's no conscious living. All mechanical. Yeah. That's why I say in my class, if I say, have you locked the door? People all have a doubt. Are you locked here? Can I? Why? Because when you close the door, you are not conscious enough to recognize that. Therefore, you don't remember that. Simple as that. Yeah. Have you off the gas? You made a cup of tea before the class. Do <laughs> you off the gas? Ah, I usually off. Usually, today, you remember? Do you remember offing it? Most of you will not. Why? Mechanical routine, na? Chai nikal diya off kiya. See, you don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. Routine things become routine. But the routine things, can you do a bit more awarefully? Why is that necessary? Because look at it. You need emotional independence, Vairagya. Asangattva. At the same time, you need involvement in your family and things like that, no? Correct or not? Isn't it a tightrope walking? You need to get involved. At the same time, you need to be emotionally independent. You need to get involved in action, at the same time not be caught up in it. You need to have the fine things in life, at the same time have a sense of vairagya objectivity. You need to love your family, etc. At the same time, not get emotionally dependent on it. Are you getting the whole idea? This is what he's saying, the razor's edge. <coughs> that balance. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, there is a book called The Razor's Edge by Somerset Mom. Now, Somerset Mom is an old time writer. Only people who are senior citizens here will have heard of Somerset Mom. <laughs> the younger generation may not have heard of Somerset Mom. Okay. The best book he has ever written is this book called The Razor's Edge. It's about a book, a person called Larry. A World War II fighter pilot who survived the war and then came to India in search of truth. And he stayed in Ramanashram for years. This is his story actually. Very beautifully written. 
if the people of if you are not read it please take it up and read it you will drop some of, lot of your orthodox ideas on seeking also what is the name somerset mom's razor's edge razor's edge i've read yeah i've read you will negate all your ideas of what a student of vedanta should be all the orthodoxy will go the content will remain but in you will see in that life how we get involved with things at the same time how you keeps a dispassion about things those who have not read it read it's a good book to understand yeah i mean about seekers there are a lot of books available ishwara darshanam all the traditionals will love that book it's about tapavan maharaj's journey from a student to realize soul beautiful everyone learn now it razor is many people will not enjoy it if you have orthodoxy in you you will not enjoy it that's why i'm advising people to read it because it will destroy the orthodoxy <laughs> yeah you will go beyond the orthodoxy it's necessary to understand to go beyond it and ah, whatever our character is this is not what a seeker of vedanta should be <laughs> can already this is how the mamas will talk when you read that book <laughs> and if you are talking like that yeah understand that you have a lot of orthodoxy in you and you have to grow out of it ramana accepted him as a student and he stayed for years in ramana ashram so he must have been something no <laughs> then who are you and i to sit in judgment over him there's something to learn from him that's why i read it <laughs> okay yeah the razor's edge all right so this is about that balance that you have and also the importance of learning it from a teacher a sampradaya with that's why many people talk about vedanta <coughs> okay many people talk but talking about vedanta is one thing and unfolding it is another thing yeah so huge that's why he says prapya varan nibodata that word varan is very very this thing there you know even the shastra shankara somewhere mentions this three broad categories of gurus the upanishad makes it very clear shotriyam brahmanishtam you need to be both you need to be rooted in the reality and have the methodology of teaching be a sampradaya vet yeah be a sampradaya vet if you are not a sampradaya vet it won't work yeah all right fine that is a uttama teacher the best of teachers then who is second second is a kshatriya but not a brahmanishta yet he is on the way he will become brahmanishta but he is a kshatriya all right why is he the second best because he will not misguide you he has got enough insights but he is not yet rooted in the knowledge he is struggling with it himself but that's okay why he has got enough insights to be a teacher and he has got the shastra with him he may not be as convincing as a shotriyam brahmanishta but he is good enough for you why by the time you gain enough insights to check up whether he is a brahmanishta or not he has already become a brahmanishta why 10 years have passed now <laughs> by that time he has become a brahmanishta the third shankara says He is a Brahmanista, but not a Kshatriya. Brahmanista, but not a Kshatriya. Why he is rooted in Brahman? He didn't have to go through the elaborate studies. He was a yoga prastha from his previous life. Previous life, he became a yoga prastha. Now, don't me ask, don't ask me what is a yoga prastha. You have heard in the Gita, right? Yeah. When you died before, 
he got it completely so this lifetime very little some few words he heard here and there was enough for him so because of that he has not picked up the methodology of teaching because he has not gone through the grind but he is a brahmanishta all right so he is inspiring but he cannot teach now in this way will shankara come first category shutreyam brahmanishta we will ramana kam third category brahmanishta all right but he was not a teacher he didn't teach he just shifted your attention to the reality that's it find out who you are first that is why when he, he wrote some things like upadesh saram sat darshanam etc it has to be interpreted for a sampradaya with oh that's beautiful because you see the nuances ha ah, idhar thoda idhar ho gaya udhar ho gaya but his own words is beautiful but the devotees reading it what will happen to them they all talk about nayana diksha this that etc and all the nonsense will come up in fact puja samji used to teach both upadesh saram and sat darshana then some people from ramana ashram started saying swami dhanan ji is misinterpreting ramana <laughs> so he stopped he said let me not disturb them there so many texts to re teach i thought i'll make ramana understood by all these people <laughs> but yeah so that is the problem okay because varan when you say prapya varan nibodata what do you mean the best of the teachers <coughs> the best of the teachers are both <coughs> Shotriyam, Brahmanishtam. Then why am I putting in the word sampradaya with along with that? Because when you say Shotriyam etc., people say those are well versed in the shastra. Lot of scholars available, well versed in the shastra. They are not sampradaya with teachers. The methodology of teaching they don't have. Scholarship they have. with the methodology of teaching sometimes some of these scholars have disappointed me because we have called them to speak at our setups and all that they speak very well very nice but when i am looking at it scholarship is there but being a sampradaya with is not there disappointing because you can make out where the student will not get it where is going off the point that's why i am constrained in today's world to say that because today's world scholarship exists in universities this that everyone is teaching everyone considers themselves a scholar and there are traditional scholarships also in sanskrit they are learning it but just because you have learned the upanishad in sanskrit doesn't mean you will be a sampradaya with like how there is an english academic there is sanskrit academics also all you have to do is go to the set up at kochin where this guy hari singh has put up a nice set up it's part of the chinmaya mission college traditional sanskrit this every year five students are taken and taught another person was in charge he doesn't encourage a debate he is not a sampradaya with himself he is one of those champions just because he knows sanskrit is put there i don't want to mention names okay how do you know that because i went there for a conference i heard all these characters speaking i went just to hear <laughs> so today's world i am constrained to say that okay kshotriya means sampradaya with and 
is not something I am saying and merely of my own. Shankara himself has said it. A sampradaya with guru. Hu. A guru, someone who claims to be a guru is not a sampradaya with. Murkha vat upakshaniya. Like how you leave a fool alone, you leave this guy also alone. Shankara, okay. <laughs> a discerning student can make out and still gain something from them. See, you can gain something from everyone. A logical person, you can gain something. I am not against anyone. But what is it that te it involves teaching? That is the thing. That's why all the Kshurasya Dhara, etc. I has said. Okay, all right. Any questions on this? Uh, yeah. Yes, Maharaj. So, just to understand, so basically, are you only referring to like teachers who like uh, postpone moksha in future event? Is that all? Yeah, it, one. It is one of the points. See, one of the points will be postponing that moksha. <laughs> Another point would be uh, saying that you need backup of an experience for moksha. Okay. But it's not understood. Yeah. Another thing is putting it as an occurrence, as an event. Right. As something that so happens. You know? Yeah. In, in those cases, they have not even Yeah. And then there are subtle nuances also. There are subtler nuances also, but it's, as far as the public is concerned, this much is good enough to begin with. Yeah, subtler, fine nuances are there. Okay. Let me give you a presentation. See, you need to have a lot of viveka to know the truth. Really speaking, there are only two things in the world, atma and anatma. So first you need Atma, Anatma, Viveka. And then you have to understand what that Atma is. Sounds good? Correct? No? What is the flaw in it? What is the flaw? There's already duality. Probably. Exactly, there are two things in the world. <laughs> so can you see how, where it will subtly come into your mind? Two things, Atma and Atma. Yeah. Both the same degree of reality. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it all sounds correct. Garbadi is Yeah. Here is where the problem will start. Yeah. yeah. So, like this, there will be a lot of subtle points you have to be very alert for. <coughs> That's why he's not wrong in saying Shurasya Dhara, you know. Hmm. Razor sharp. <laughs> yeah. You're walking on a razor's edge. So, this will tend to make a student a bit critical in the beginning. So, then what is necessary? You need to have a critical thinking and you need to have empathy. What is empathy? Going beyond the words and understanding what is meant. Now, that is where many people will falter. Because empathy is not people's strong point. Oh. He said that, no. If he said that, he would mean it. <laughs> Do you people always say what they mean? If you think they say what they mean, you are living in fool's paradise. I have always given this example. No? Your 10 year old kid comes from school, throws his bag on the sofa, and says, Stupid school. I don't want to go back. You're going to give him a bashan on the value of education or you're going to empathize what he's feeling. By the way, to all the mothers here, what do you think he's feeling? <laughs> I said this a lot of times. Same example. What do you think he's feeling? All those are mothers here, please respond. <laughs> what is he feeling? He feels he's not being appreciated. He's feeling what? He's not being appreciated. Where did that come in? How do we make that connection? He's not feeling appreciated. Said something to him in he's not feeling lack of appreciation. He is throwing that bag on the sofa and thinks, stupid school, I don't want to go back. 
Shilpi is right. Hurt or frustration from something that happened. Anger. The first emotion that he is feeling is anger. That anger may be coming from hurt. That anger may be coming from frustration. So, empathy. What is he trying to say? Because all of Vedanta is going beyond the meaning of words, no? If you don't have empathy like this, what are you going to understand, Vedanta? So, critical thinking on one side, empathy on the other side, balancing out the two. Kshurasya dhara. But we go by block understanding. Nuances and all missed. Are you all getting what I am trying to say? You know, this, the subtlety of thinking that is necessary in understanding Vedanta. Oh. And where will you get this? You will get it only for living your life. <laughs> when you dealt with kids, your mother tells you something. You all think this is a hotel only. Come when you want, go when you want. What do you think she is feeling? What is that? Once again, once again, stick to the stick to the <laughs> example right now. <clears throat> yeah, Shilpi has said the right thing, unappreciated. Taken for granted. <clears throat> She's doing so much, nobody's appreciating. You're just walking and walking out as you want. She has made a nice meal and you are saying, oh, I've eaten and come. Not even told her before. <clears throat> unappreciated. Yeah. Many mothers feel this. Many of you have felt it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, how will you learn all these things? Life will teach you. It doesn't matter whether you have lived at home for 20 years or you lived at home for 50 years. If you have learned, you have learned. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Learning is important, not the number of years. Yeah. Some kids get it fast, some don't. Yeah. So the question is, all this fineness of the buddhi, then you can look into the teaching. Because now you have a basis to look into the teaching. I am not saying in your functioning world, you will always be able to empathize or always get it. No, there will be times when you don't get it. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. But basically, do you have empathy with you? Can you go beyond the spoken word and understand what the feeling, what the thinking is? If you can do that, you are fine. But now be careful. Swamiji said empathy, I had to go beyond the words. I come home to your place and say, Swamiji, what will you have? Oh, a glass of water. Achha. Swamiji said about empathy, water, water is colorless liquid. He is asking for vodka. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of empathy can be a problem, okay? <laughs> be careful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so empathy when necessary. Every every statement is not looked at it like that. <laughs> yeah. Most of the time it's straightforward conversation. Yeah. <laughs> You have to know when to empathize also. Not a wonder relationships are a mess. No? <laughs> because all this is part of the relationship. Yeah. Bharti was saying something about Israeli Hamas conflict.
Bharti, are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Either you are fighting Israel or you are fighting Palestine. Yeah. But actually, I see both have not adhered to Dharma. Mm, correct. Israel has every right to exist there. Even Palestine have a need to have a homeland. So they, that much right they also have. That's why if you look at the Indian official Indian response, it has been quite nuanced and balanced. We condemn the attack of the Hamas. At the same time, I supported that Palestinians need a homeland. But the problem is much more than that. That is the basic issue, correct. But the problem of fundamental Islam is also there. Yeah, that is what nobody wants to talk about. No, no, no. Peaceful living, peaceful living. Peaceful living is not possible with fundamental Islam. With a moderate Islam, yes. Not with fundamentalists. Sorry, it's a fact. People discover this the hard way. With moderates, of course, you can live together. But with fundamentalist, hard, fanatical Islam, there's no way you can live. That is the issue there. Yeah. All right. Uttishta Jagrata Prapya Varan Nabodata. Okay. Okay. Then continuing, he says, little bit he is bringing back to the what the Atma is about. Because he has been talking about knowing it, etc. So he comes back now to the topic in hand. Ashabda Masparshama Rupam Avyayam. Tatha rasam nityam aganda chaya anadi anantam mahatam param dhruvam nichayatan murtya mukhat pramuchate nichaya nishitena jana by knowing it very clearly murtya mukhat pramuchate you are free from the jaws of death beta mere the bajgayadu Yama speaking, remember that. Okay. <laughs> if you know this, you are freed from me. Otherwise, you will come into my hands again and again and again. Every time you are reborn, you are back into my hands. You will go to another dimension and there also I get you. Why? Because you have to leave that dimension. <laughs> then you will come here. Here, of course, I get you. <laughs> Every day, where I get you. <laughs> But Pramuchate, you are freed from that. When, when, when you know Nishchaya, what is that? Ashabdam. Ashabdam. That which does not have a sound. You can't hear about the Atma. About the Atma you can hear. You can't hear the Atma. But Samaji, what about in meditation when I hear the Anahat sound, etc. <laughs> Digestive noises. <laughs> No, Swamiji, I heard some of the Bijaksharas. Yes. Let me handle that also. No, no. On the, this akshara, you have to meditate lam. On the other akshara, you have to meditate... Ha, ha, theek hai. There is some truth and all that. Your seven chakras you can meditate on. Actually speaking, those are the sounds that are now, now, normally made when the energy opens up those chakras. By contemplating on it, you are just scratching the surface. Okay. Before you do that, you have to open up all the chakra gates in the, in the front and the back. In front of every chakra, there is a gate in the front. You have, to, you have to open it up, close it, open it up, close it. Then your nadi shodhanam has to happen. All the nadis should be purified, major nadis. About 12 of them have to be purified. After that, this meditation will work. Okay, otherwise it won't work. Otherwise, as Upasana, as worship of Devi, you can do that. That much is fine. That much is fine. It's a form of worship. But don't expect all the chakras to open up because you did that, okay? Nayavega. Alright. 
therefore ashabdam and the chakras are not the atma anyway they are in all near sukshma sharira in your mind they are not in a prana not anywhere else okay asparsham that which is not available for touching you can't feel it you can't touch it asparsham so what is the chakra thing in vedanta what is the vedanta we don't bother about the chakras only because all of you are exposed to all sorts of stuff i am telling it vedanta we don't bother about it chodo na ye chakkar par mat phaso <laughs> ye chakra ka chakkar par mat phaso when it opens you will get these type of sound like the bijakshara sir lam hum etc as the energy opens up you will hear these sounds internally that's why they become bijakshara so then what after that means after that whatever siddhi you want will happen all level of siddhi is an all only okay, your tai chi level that's it not more than that asparsham arupam that which does not have a form for you to objectify arupam why because the content of the one who objectifies everything else arupam avyayam that is not under the hold of time tatha arasam you can taste the atma i will taste bliss nahi hota hai arasam nityam aganda chayat no smell after a, after a workout you may stink but the atma doesn't <laughs> okay aganda ch agandach anadi anantam without beginning and end without beginning and end means what don't look at it linear without beginning and end you know when you say without beginning and end you will think linearly no beginning no end means dimensionless without any dimensions yeah because from any side na beginning and beginning and dimensionless mahatav param Beyond the mahat, mahat is a here nigger ba cosmic mind. Dhruvam, it's all eternal, always there, always there as the same entity as that pure consciousness. This is what I am. What I am, that's important. Nichaya, when that is very clear. Mrutti mukhat pramuchchate, you are freed from the jaws of death. Why? <laughs> death ahi nahi hai. Anadi Ananta means what? Where is death? I am not creating a deathless state. I am recognizing that I was never born, never dying. I cannot be objectified. If it is Ashabdham, Asparsham, etc., how do you know it? Because already known as I. Remember, this is important. I, yeah. It's already known as I. The immanent aspect. Never forget. We only focus on the transcendental aspect of the Atma. It's already known as the I, and from this I now negate sound, ashabdam, all this negate, asparsham, arupam, agrahyam, all that, all that body, mind, etc. Na, no? anadi anantam, all these are negating words. What is left behind? You, the conscious being. What is that? Nothing but consciousness, dhruvam. Anadi anantam. From you, the being, negate, shabdam, sparsham, rupam, rasam, gandam, etc. What is left behind? Awareful being. Anadi anantam. Entity gone. Only consciousness remains. Dhruvam the same. You. All the words are negating words if we look at it. Neti neti iti. negating all that you are not but all that you have taken yourself to be can you see how important this verse is one verse the whole idea of adhyaropa apavada is coming right there all that you have superimposed on yourself name form the dark etc all negated apavada all negated then what do you just being awareful being also what gone why anadi anantam without beginning without end then what only consciousness the awareness that's all there is there correct it nahi hai then where is death where is birth where is finitude 
है ही नहीं रिमेम्बर दिस इज नॉट समवेयर आउट देयर द आत्मा इज लिक दिस लिक दिस लिक दिस लिक दिस नो दिस इज अ मिस्टेक पीपल मेक आट आत्मा इज अशब्दम स्पर्शम अरूपम ऑल दैट ऑल दैट ऑल दैट from you the conscious being keep negating as shabdam asparsham arupam etc now what is left behind consciousness or care everything else has been negated the awareful being from that awareful being anything that can be objectified is negated anything that's finite is negated what is left behind limitless consciousness aur kuch hai hi nahi all there is left is limitless consciousness finished इतना ही बात है सो सम होमवर्क फॉर यू ऑल ओके बिफोर द नेक्स्ट क्लास टेक दिस वर्स एंड वर्क ऑन इट नो प्रॉब्लम आदि नो प्रॉब्लम्स। सो बिफोर द नेक्स्ट क्लास टेक दिस वर्स and see every word ashabdam asparsham aru see that see the meaning of it when you say ashabdam what all it negates asparsham what all negates arupam what all negates from you okay ashabdam asparsham arupam all that from you the conscious being what all is negated was left behind is you anadi anantam without beginning and end This will become mananam slipping into nididhyasanam. Okay, so do that. Then we can go ahead for the next couple of verses next time. Okay, Om Tat Sat. Good place to stop.